on the subject of getting into business for yourself, I consider myself a bearer of good news when I'm in a, in a meeting like this to share with you that there is an alternative to big corporate employment. That if you are the right person, self-employment, owning a business, whatever terms you use, entrepreneur, can be a great thing. Again, if you're the right person. And one of the things I've determined is that there are four different kinds of people really when it comes to being in business for yourself. On when it, one end of the spectrum we have the serial entrepreneur. The person who would never be in this room. None of you, not me, not Jeff. That person's always out starting something. And they're like someone I talked to last year, he had a bit business, he said it's my fourth startup. He was still in his 30s, he had 15 employees and he was getting bored with managing the business. He wanted to go take his next idea, which he already had, and develop it. On the other end of the spectrum are people like my mother. My mother was a college level math teacher and she couldn't imagine anything riskier than getting a paycheck from a government school every month. And in the middle are the rest of us. And often we stumble or get forced into it. Uh, one of my clients, his name was Craig, he first had, should we say, anger, frustration when he lost his job and then he said, I've been thinking for about seven or eight years, I want to get into business for myself. The company just gave me the kick in the pants to go do it. They trained me, they paid me enough, I could build up some capital. Now it's time for me to have my own business. And then there are people who spend their early career just building towards being in business for themselves, working towards that end of the spectrum where the entrepreneur comes out. And one of my good friends here in town has coined the term re-entrepreneur for people who buy a business. I think franchise buyers are the same thing. You're taking someone, someone has started, grown, and reinventing, rejuvenating it. So think of yourself if that's what you're interested in as a re-entrepreneur. So before I get into the specifics of business buying, share with me, and I know some of you went to Jeff's session on Tuesday, probably asked a similar question. Why do you want to be in business for yourself? Whether it's buying a business, starting a business, or getting a franchise. Flexibility. Okay. Better work-life balance. Balance. Mm -hmm. Flexibility, balance, what else? <clears throat> More control. Control. More Results for performance, but not affected, you know, like glass ceiling and stuff like that. You can actually be rewarded if you're good. Results for performance, no glass ceiling. You right. get, in other words, you get... You good, get paid for the paid. good, hard, smart work you do, not the big right. corporate shareholders. Right. Okay, what else? How about this one? Yes, yes, yes. Money. Mm -hmm. And if you get that through salary and equity. And think about it, if we'll use business buying as a perfect <coughs> example. You make a down payment out of your fund, say 20, 25% of the purchase price, and even if you do nothing more than keep the business where it is, over the time you pay off your acquisition loans to the bank and or the seller, you, your net worth from that 20, 25% down payment is now 100%, and if you grow the business, it's even more. And the good news is all of those, those payments have come in through the side door from the profits of the business. And that's, that's one reason to think about this. But I'm going to put on the, on the top here in red letters what I think is the number one reason why you should think about being a business for yourself. Simple three-letter word. Fun. Wake up in the morning with a smile on your face because it's your business. And, I mean, don't get the impression there's no problems, there's no issues. Small businesses have alligators nipping at them the same as in big corporations. It's just that you get to do these other things have flexibility, how you control the results you get from keeping your alligators at bay. So, we talk about money in here. Uh, it's a good time to talk about how much money is needed. When you buy an established company, you should figure you will need 
one to three times your salary in cash out of your pocket for a down payment. One to three times your salary. So if you're a hundred thousand dollar person, you're gonna need one to three hundred thousand dollars. If you're a two hundred thousand dollar person, and we're talking fair market salary, not what you're willing to take or would really want, but what you're worth in the marketplace. Uh, 200000 you're going to need two to 600 Compare that to starting a business or buying a franchise. I'm going to say that it's going to take the same amount of money one to three times your salary. It's just that, especially in a startup, you get to use a lot of that as sweat equity. You start it, you may not get a paycheck for a year. Well, if you're a $100,000 a year person, there's 100000 plus your startup costs. And if you buy a franchise, you're making a maybe a smaller initial investment, but you still have to have that sweat equity. So there is an investment involved, whether it's, it's actual cash or the time you put in without pay. This study is 10 years old, said half of workers were not satisfied with their job. What do you think it is today? 60? Mm -hmm. 70, 80. 70, 80? We're disengaged okay. from the company. Disengaged. Which means unhappy. Yeah. Can I, should I be the auctioneer? Do I hear 80 to 90? <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody has ever said it's lower in the last couple of few years. <coughs> you know, 20 years ago, I knew a bank uh, branch manager, and he pointed this top issue here that workload has increased. He, he, his bank, one of the big banks had gone through a round of layoffs, and his comment was, well, they pleased Wall Street. Those of us who didn't get laid off now just have to work harder to do the same amount of work. So, yes, it's risky to buy a business or any get into business, and I feel it's a little redundant to talk about these things at an outplacement agency because you all know that there's risk in uh, working for somebody else. Uh, when Jeff and I used to speak at the Chase Wamu Career Center, this last one, a company going out of business, really resonated. Uh, there's, so there's, the point is there's risk in it. So what are the conditions now? That's always something people want to know about. What's going on with the buying and selling of businesses? And you can see that you can see my bullet points. There are serious buyers out there. There's serious people who would love to buy a business. There just aren't as many of them as there have been. In 2009, after the Great Recession hit, the Wall Street collapse, the number of business buyers was through the roof. We we weren't even in this room. We were in a big room upstairs with twice as many people. And it was like that way all over town. Now, most of them weren't serious. They were just looking at options because the job market, of course, was crunch. Uh, not nearly as many buyers. We'll see some statistics and comparisons later. There are sellers out there. There are more sellers. Uh, everyone I know in the ind industry is saying s sellers are coming out of the woodwork. There's a lot of studies and surveys have been done to say that there's a, because of the demographics, a lot of owners who wanted to sell, they were planning to sell 2008, 9, 10, just had to put it off. And now they're coming out and saying, I want to sell. So the ratio between buyers and sellers, and it's usually a lot more buyers to sellers, has come almost even. There will always be more supposed buyers, but it's really close right now. And a lot of people will ask, well, what about financing a deal? And as it says on here, the banks are willing. Yes, they will loan for a business acquisition. Of course, it has to be a good deal. It has to meet loan ratios and covenants. But I haven't had a client have a problem get financing uh, since 2009. In fact, I sat on a focus group for Union Bank the other day, and they brought in a couple people like me, intermediaries, uh, a couple people have bought businesses, sold businesses, there were a couple CPAs in the room just to say, what are we doing? How can we do better for our clients? And they made it real clear though, loans for business acquisitions are on the top of their list. They're things they really like. And then the last bullet point, even though it's been over three years since the Great Recession started, is the business recession proof. Everyone wants to see, what did the business do in 08, 09, 10? If it survived, if it actually did better, like a deal one of my clients is about to close on, grew every year during the recession, it's, it's like magic. This is great. It's a recession-proof business.
comments, questions? What business is that? I can't say the specifics, but I can tell you it's a uh, it's a service business. Service businesses have done better in general over the last four years. Uh, it's a testing business, so there's some mandated requirements for what they test. Uh, but I've seen it in a, in a lot of other service businesses have done pretty well during the recession. So the bank give you a loan based on your potential and based on your, um, I would say, net worth? The bank will give you a loan for an acquisition based on a combination of your experience, the capital you bring to the table, and realize that when you buy a business, you are truly trading capital, your capital, for cash flow. When you buy a business, you close on the deal on the 31st, you go to work the next day, the 15th rolls around, you get a paycheck just like everyone else, but you do have to have that capital, that one to three times salary I talked about. They will take that in conjunction with the business. How profitable has it been? They will not loan on, here's where I think the business could be potential-wise. They'll loan based on historical profit, cash flow to that company. If it's a new idea, then it's going to be difficult. Then you're not really buying a business, you're starting one. So, and banks are hesitant to fund startups. Okay. They will send, you know, a new idea, they will send, you know, they're going to tell you go to angel investors and venture capital firms type, or just bootstrap it. If it's a, an established idea, like you say, I've got 20 years experience as a clothing buyer, I want to open up my clo own clothing store, you've got a better chance of getting some kind of loan, but it will depend on your personal financial statement. So a couple case studies. Bill had come out of being a sales manager and with consumer products and he met, there's two people that own the business that he bought. He met them and they hit it off like long lost pals. I mean just the relationship was as tight as could be. Uh, it says that the burned out owners, uh, it's an understatement, they were fried. They were just going through the motions. And they immediately grasped onto the fact that Bill was the guy they should buy the business. Give me an example, because when buyers decide they want to own a business, a particular business, it's because they see something in the company that they feel they can add value to right away. In Bill's case, one of the important things was, this is a service company, they had a website that was a brochure, and he said, that website could be used for a lot more. Within three months of owning the business, he turned the website into an ordering system. His customers then could go on the website, book the service times, his, his people could be more productive because they didn't have to get into the phone tag game and spend time taking the order. It was all done on the website. And of course, the customers liked that too because they got to do it once on the web instead of trading calls. He doubled the business in two years. His financing package was he put in a third of the price, the bank put in a third, and the sellers financed a third. 